Welcome to Furniture Redesigned by MBM. Hey everyone, welcome back. This is the project or one of the projects that we'll be working on for today. Now this is an old sideboard that I picked up off a porch. It had been sitting there for a few weeks and I'm sure it got really wet, but it dried out. There is no warping and the piece is solid wood. Now, as you see, the finish is flaking off all over, but we're going to sand back the top and paint the body. All the hardware is here, but there is some chipping on the corners and also on the base of the dresser. Because the piece have been sitting outside, we know that it's really, really nasty. So we're going to clean that up. Here is a look at the tall boy. Now this piece um, I got from a friend who belonged to his parents and he no longer needed it. Now it's in my basement and it's in really, really good conditions. Just a few scratches that's on the piece, but I do want the two peaches, pieces to match. As we move back around to the front of the piece, here's a look at the hardware. Now this hardware is rounded, whereas on the other piece is more squared at the top. But I'm going to buy hardware like this because I know I can find it to match and put on the other piece. So in my squirt bottle, I have TSP and a water mixture. I'm spraying down my piece and I'm going to scrub it free up any grease or grime that's on it. For my other piece, I flipped it over on its back so that I can clean it. And here I can see where it's missing some trim. Uh, the doors are straight. There's no damage to them. I don't know how I'm going to repair this, but we'll see. Again, here around the front side, it has a curve. And you can see all the scratches. You can see where the trim is almost gone. But it has this beautiful Greek key design. And I want to make sure that that's not sanded away in the process of sanding down my piece. On this side of the room, I've already taken the drawers out and checked them. They are all in great working condition. Same thing, the finish is failing on the drawers and I want to clean them. I have my warm water and I'm using Simple Green in this bottle. I want to spray the piece down and really, really give it a good scrub because this piece has been sitting outside for, I'm told, a couple of weeks. So I want to make sure that I scrub, scrub, scrub it clean inside and out. I'm almost done and this is how dirty this piece was. After all my cleaning is done, I came back downstairs and I'm sorry I didn't turn on my recorder, but I added stripper to the top of the dresser and covered it in plastic. I did use Ready Strip Advance and I'm gonna let it sit under this plastic for about an hour and come back. It's later in the day after I went out and got something to eat and I'm taking the drawers from the tall boy and removing the hardware. Then I'll take a plastic putty knife and start to scrape the stripper off the top of the tall boy. I'm sorry I'm a little out of focus, but I'm five feet tall and I wasn't aware that you couldn't see the top of the dresser. It's 
So here's a closer look at the top of the dresser as I scrape away all the stripper. Now here in the family room, I'm working on the other piece. I'm using 80 grit sandpaper to sand away the flaking finish. I didn't want to use the stripper in the upstairs family room because it does have a strong smell and I didn't want that smell in the upstairs. So this was a little harder than anticipated so I took it outside since it's right at the patio door and I'm going to use my belt sander and try to smooth out the top of this piece as well as take away the finish. I switched to a 220 grit sandpaper and I just want to scuff sand the sides and the front of the piece as well as the drawers. I have my piece sanded. Now I want to take some warm water to wipe away the sawdust from the piece. On the drawers, I'm going to take this chip brush and I just want to brush away all the dust from my piece. I'm also checking it to make sure that none of the leftover stain is flaking off before I rinse it down. Over here on my base, you can see I took Bondo and I added it to cover up all the dings and dents and missing pieces on the sideboard. I've already taken my sander and sanded it smooth and I did this off camera. I turned my attention to the dresser doors. I removed them from the piece. I removed the trim as well. Now I'm just taking my small sander and I'm sanding away all of the loose top coat and making sure that it's smooth where I took away the trim. All my sanding is done. All of my patchwork is done. I've wiped everything clean and free and now we're ready for paint. Today I'm using Dixie Bell's chalk paint in the color Midnight Sky. I shook it as well as stirred it really well. And now I'm just gonna pour it into this container. And today I'll be using my short handle angle brush to paint my dresser. 
I'm going to start painting the drawer with a little trim work on it and I'm going to use the brush to go around and get into those corners. I'm using very little paint because I don't want my paint to pull in these corners. And no, I'm not priming today because I'm not worried about bleed through. And I'm also using a chalk paint and I will be adding a top coat. I'm going to continue getting my first coat of paint on the piece, let it dry, and we'll come back and add that second coat. The first coat of paint is dried on my drawers as well as my dresser, and you can see I'm getting pretty good coverage. You can also see how the design, the molding, and the Greek key design painted up really good for the first coat. On the inside of the dresser and along the base of the dresser, you can see the repairs. Now I see also that I have a little touch up to do, but it came out really good. Time for that second coat. I pulled out my Mr. Bottle to miss my piece. I added, used the Mr. Bottle to, to give me a little bit more working time with my paint. I can smooth it out before it dries. I also switched up my paintbrush. I went from the short handle angle brush to this rounded chalk paintbrush with a pointed tip. I did this so that I can get into those creases and curves, especially around, around that Greek key and the crown trim on the front of the piece.
I also added a little bit more Bondo to the corner that needed to be filled in a little bit more and sanded it smooth. And I'm also gonna touch up that area. Now I'm inside my garage and I have my piece upside down. I wanted to add legs to the bottom of my piece to give it a little height, but I wasn't quite sure how to do it. So what I did was took two pieces of wood, one by twos, and I cut them to length and I added them to the bottom of the piece. It extends from one end to the other end, screwed and glued in to place. Here is where I'll add my hardware piece for my legs. On the back end, I did the same thing, but I used two pieces of the wood. I didn't have a two by four, so I used two pieces of the one by two. I added it to the piece here and glued it in and screwed it. And this is where I add my leg on the back side. I hope you can understand and see what I did. And I know this is probably not the right way. I could have built a base, but I don't have the proper wood to do so. So we're doing it here. Now I am gonna pull these cap pieces or the pieces for the bottom that's already there out. I'll pull these out. So I grabbed the chisel because it has a flat edge and I have my hammer here and I'm just using it to pry under um, this floor protector um, to get it out. And I'll do this on all four corners. Now I have my drill here and I have it taped off. This is the bracket that I need to put on the piece. So it has a depth, so that's why I have my drill taped. I taped it so that I wouldn't go deeper than this depth and I am just putting the hole where I need this attachment to go. Once I reach the proper depth, I clean the hole, add my bracket, do it three more times and then I'll use the screws that came with the brackets to screw the brackets into place. Then I'm ready to screw my legs into the brackets. If you're interested in these legs or any materials used in this tutorial, it would be in the description box below. I have my dresser upright. I've also sanded the top with a 220 grit sandpaper to make sure that it's smooth and cleaned it. Today I'm going to be using Minwax Gel Stain in the color Hickory. I have this sponge applicator to apply my gel stain. Now with the gel stain, you just want to massage it into the wood and then you want to take a shop cloth or a clean cloth or flip over your pad, which I'll be doing, and wipe away the excess. I'm back inside in the basement. Just like the piece outside, I added the hickory gel stain to the top of the tall boy. The paint is dry and the gel stain is dry. Now I want to add a top coat. Um, you really don't need a top coat, but because this is the top of a dresser and the top of a chest, I want to make sure that it's well to protect it. And I'm going to use this Gator Hide by Dixie Bell. Now this will be my first time using Dixie Bell Gator Hide for a top coat. Normally, 
I'm a white born poly type of girl, but I didn't want a high shine. So I'm going to use this Dixie Belle Gator High. Uh, it came highly recommended and I have seen other uh, DIYers use it. I also ordered the Dixie Belle sponge applicator and I'm going to use this to put on my top coat. And it said I should uh, dampen the top of it, which I've already done with my uh, Mr. Bottle. I added the Gator Hide to this container and my sponge fit really well into that. So I'm just going to stick this into the Gator Hide, wipe off the excess, and I'll be ready to add it to the top of my piece. Uh, not only am I going to add it to the top of the piece, I'm going to go ahead and add it to the entire piece. I'll use two to three coats on the top and uh, just one coat on the side to make sure that my paint is protected. Before adding my second coat of the Gator Hide, I have zero, zero density steel wool, and I just wanna knock down any imperfections that's gotten into my top coat before adding the second. On today, I wanna wipe down the base of my piece. I wanna go ahead and get the top coat added to the base. But before that, you wanna make sure that you clean off any dust and debris. I decided against a gator height and thought I should use the Verifane for the base of my dresser. Now it's time to add the pulls. I ordered new pulls for the piece, but they were a little larger and the colors were off. So I spray painted them all. I added the smaller ones to the top of the piece and the larger ones to the bottom of both pieces. Before we see the finished pieces, let's take a quick look at what they looked like before. I think my pieces turned out absolutely fabulous. Now, this is the old sideboard gone dresser in the garage. Look at that top. The top is absolutely fabulous in the hickory color. Now, this is a commission piece, so I do hope my client will actually love it. And here's a closer look at the hardware. Now, it all has been painted in the Rust-Oleum Gold. On the inside of the drawers, since they were kind of messed up, I took some wallpaper and added it as a liner, and then I added a piece of felt on top of the liner for lingerie and personals. Again, absolutely stunning. I did nothing to the bottom of the piece except for cleaned it and waxed with Howard's feed. Absolutely stunning. But let me know what do you think? Do you think my client will love it? So if you're out there watching and you haven't subscribed to the channel, now is the perfect time to hit the subscribe button. And don't forget the notification bell so you will know when I upload new tutorials. If you look a little closer at the bottom, you'll see that I ch changed the legs. I decided to go for a shorter leg and I had these on hand and they were a good color match for the top. I like this much better. And here's a look at the tall boy in the basement. 
once again absolutely stunning now if you're looking you can see that the pulls on the top are smaller than the bottom and also look at that top it has just the right amount of shine with the right coloring of brown absolutely love it so if i still have your attention make sure you drop me a comment and let me know how did i do do you like the two pieces together did i make good color choices for my client i want to know If you look closely at the inside of the drawers, you'll see I used the same wallpaper that I used on the other piece. It's time to say thank you all for watching and have a wonderful, wonderful day. God bless. I'll see you in my next video. Happy New Year.